Praise God. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. You know, I look forward to Sunday mornings. It, it's such a blessing to know that all your brothers and sisters will be here and you can smile to them and talk to them and shake hands with them. And just think what a glorious day that that'll be when we all get to be with Jesus and walk the streets of gold. Just stay close to Jesus. No pain, no tears, no suffering. What a day that will be Amen. with my Jesus I shall see. Amen. Oh, God is a good God. God is a loving God. And we thank Him for that. We just praise Him and give Him the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, as the service is about to begin. And we just ask you, Lord, that everything would, that we say and do would glorify you and that the anointing would be here, Lord, and we just praise you and give you the glory and we thank you for all the prayers that are answered and we thank you, Lord, for the things that haven't been done but you will do, Lord. Father, we know that you are faithful and we praise you and we give you the glory. We thank you for everything that you do, Lord, and we just give you all the glory and praise you. We thank you, Lord. Be with us in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ, He knew that mankind would always need help. And on that day that He died upon that cross, He still had you and me on His mind. Yes. He had you and me on His mind because He knew that we were a sinful natured creation. He knew that we were going to sin. He knew that we were going to fall. And here he is, the Roman soldiers. He's on that cross and he's about to be crucified and shed his blood upon the ground for the remission of sins for mankind. And he knew that whosoever would call on his name shall be saved. He knew that. But he also knew that when he ascended back to the right hand of the Father, that He needed to leave us something else. He needed to leave us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter of God, the One that comforts us as we go through life and we face those deaths and we face those tragedies and we face those tribulations. God knew that we needed a Comforter. Now my cousin, for example, who would have known that her husband was going off to, a, to, a, to an ordinary hot trip that he did every year would never come back home. Just think what, what that lady is feeling on the inside of herself right now. And know that God Almighty knew the day that He would drop and the day that He would die, the day that He was born. What an awesome God He is. But He didn't leave us alone, church. He left us a comforter because He know one day we'll all be gathered together when He opens up that sky and says, come up hither. He knows we'll all be gathered together and you and I are down here on this earth and we don't know His plan, but He knows His plan. So we just have to trust in Him and let the Holy Spirit comfort us and let God's Word comfort us as we go through this life. Because we just see a small part of the picture. There's a great big picture called life. And we see a little bitty corner of it down here. But God's standing up here in heaven. And He sees the whole picture. And we think it'll never be the same. It's just not ever going to be the same. No, you're right, church. It's not going to be the same. It's going to be better when we're in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one that died on that cross for the remission of our sins. He knew that we needed help all the way through life. Is there anybody in here that can get through life without the Lord Jesus Christ? If you can, raise your hand. Amen. None of us can. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. And He knew that. And He said, before I go, when I go to my Father in heaven, they wanted to know where He was going. And Jesus told them, you can't go with me. Because I go to my Father that I can send you a comforter. How sweet that comforter is. Can I get an amen on how sweet the Holy Spirit is? 
can I get a, can I just get a, a testimony of somebody that can say the Holy Spirit guided me, the Holy Spirit helped me, the Holy Spirit never left me. He raised up in me at a time when I thought I couldn't take another step, but the Holy Spirit of God raised up in me and caused me to take another step forward in this game that we call life. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to be reading out of the book of John in chapter 14. And I'm going to start out at verse 16. And Jesus says, when you're there, say amen. Amen. That's one. That's two. There's 25 people in here. Everybody there? John chapter 14, I'm going to start in verse 16. And Jesus is the one saying these words, it's written in red. And Jesus said in verse 16, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he might abide with you forever. Do you see that church? God sent the comforter, the Holy Spirit. The one that would abide with us forever. And how many times do we go through life and we feel that he's so far away, he's just not touchable. But i got news for you, brothers and sisters. He lives on the inside of you. And sometimes we have to get ourselves stirred up. And we have to get that spirit rising up in us and helps us and causes us to be bold for the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in First. 26 over here in the next chapter it says but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me and I just want to say brothers and sisters that the testimony of a born again believer is one of the most powerful things that we can give to another person can I give an amen amen, amen. you know that's I gotta bring it up, Matt. Matt and I was talking this morning, and we was talking about using things that had happened in our lives, and the things that some pastors they just say them over and over and over and over. But I'm fixing to do the same thing, so I got no room to talk. When I was in that wreck, that wreck should have killed me. In an embankment, running 120 mile an hour, threw me out of the car, broke my back in two places, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I bruised my kidneys, broke four ribs loose from my spine, and I laid in the hospital for two and a half months flat on my back. And that doctor came in there and he said this to me. He said, what do you do for a living? I said, I work construction. He said, not anymore. And I'd already prayed to my Heavenly Father. I was as drunk as drunk could be. But my Heavenly Father's ear was like this. And He knew that that was about to break me of my drinking career. And I said, Lord, if you'll get me out of here in one piece, I will leave it alone. I've done with it forever. Guess what? 36 years later, I retired out of the Labor's Union as a number one construction man for two different construction companies. Praise God. And I'll tell you something else. The Holy Spirit of God went with me on those jobs. And the Holy Spirit of God helped me to witness to those people. And the Holy Spirit of God never left me. And there was a couple of them that got saved through my life. And I just blessed God. That was a bad experience. But I tell you, church, it was worth every bit of it to see those tears Run down people's eyes when you witness and tell them the testimony yes. and what God done for you. Amen. Will you be bold today, sir, and stand up and rise up and let the Holy Spirit stir up in your spirit and tell people about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've, I've had something on my mind for a Just while. Just come on up here. When I was in college, I wanted to be a nun. The Lord that opened all the doors for me to be a nun, and He opened the doors. I didn't have any any way to pay for it. He uh, gave me money through. 
for a grant to pay for it, and it, it I went there, and and I, I had the choice between an all girl college and a mixed college, and uh, I didn't know which one to pick, so I just picked the mixed college, and and uh, the first year was really good. I had good friends, and and. Uh, then in the second year, uh, the first year I think I I went to this retreat and I was so confused. I was so confused because uh, I saw in my mind that I wanted to be a nun, but I wanted to get married too. So it was a real, real decision for me, and uh, I didn't know which way to go. So. Uh, I just said, uh, God, uh, one night at a, at a revival, um, I, I, I really, I started going to a Pentecostal church, and I, at, at, in, uh, I was alone at the altar, and at, and I prayed to God, and I prayed in tongues and everything. I have never done that, but I did. And, and uh, then I thought, I heard somebody come in. I was at the altar, uh, and I was, had my head down, and I was so scared. It was so weird. <laughs> I was so scared. But then I saw, uh, some, I heard somebody come in, and I thought, the devil. He's coming to get me. So I was really scared. And when I, I, I saw the devil come up and um, I was just I just didn't know what to do. And then he came he, he came up and I, he kind of touched me or something. But then there was and then there, and she was praying for me. It's confusing, it really is. But um, but then I I didn't know what to do, so I ran from God. I thought the uh, the devil is always going to be after me if I lead a life following Jesus. So I just ran. I was too scared, so I just ran from God. <laughs> I really did. And I got into some bad things. I really did. And, uh, but the Lord was with me through it all. I think he was with me. And uh, the, I, I just uh, kept, I kept running. I got married. My first marriage was a disaster. I got married to Mike. And, uh, we went to churches, and, and he, I really think through him I saw Christ again. I, I uh, really became a Christian and gave my life to Christ. And then I, I really followed Christ, and he took me. I couldn't go to church. I was sleeping. I was taking so much medicine and sleeping through the nights and through the mornings and everything. I said... I can't go to church with you. I'm sorry, but I just can't. So we found a church in the afternoons that I could go to. He did anything possible to, to uh, really make me a Christian. And um, because he wanted us to do things together for Christ and everything. But, and so uh, the last couple years, well, since Danny got sick and Danny Cross and everything, I just got more and more confused. And um, I just, but, but I keep coming to the altar and praying because I know that God's peace will be with you. Amen. And then I, I started thinking in the Bible, it's like the devil says in my ear, the, the Bible says this, and, and it's like like when God went in the desert and uh, 
the devil tried to uh, deceive him or tempt him and deceive him by certain things. And, and then Jesus always had scripture to give back to him to get, tell him to get away. So, uh, really, Jesus is the only way. So, he's the way I've made it so far. And I, and when I got, when I, I've become older, but hopefully a little wiser, but I get sore sometimes and, and everything, and it's harder for me to walk and everything. And, uh, but I think the Lord is still with me, and he's with all of you. of that commercial <laughs> you're not getting older you're getting better <laughs> and uh, Danny used to always preach that you were getting closer to home so I just praise God and thank him for all I've done and all he's done and uh, even in the times of my most confusion he was always there he really does so I just thank God for everything and I thank God for each one of you. Can I do 
bring an amen from a pastor that knows how to carry that message all week and you can't say anything about it? Praise God. God is good. Sometimes we've got to stir our spirit up. And we do that by the reading of God's Word. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. Did He come, Dorothy? Yeah. And I can say myself, He come to me. And He comes to you. Yes. I will not leave you comfortless. I, comfortless, I will come. Yet a little while, and the world seeth no, me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. Did you hear that? Yeah. In Romans chapter 5, and verse 10, it says this. For if we were the enemies, for if when we were the enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. We all know that when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on that cross, that Calvary, We were the only thing on his mind. Amen. And after he knew he was going back to be seated at the right hand of the Father, he knew we still needed help. And he sent his own spirit to dwell with inside of us, to lead us and to guide us into all truths, and to comfort us in times of trials and tribulations. I don't know about you all, but that touches my heart very deeply. The pain and the suffering that Christ went through on that cross, He didn't do it because somebody made Him. He did it because He loved you and I. And in that love, He knew that we needed somebody to stay with us after He was gone from this earth. How many knows that the Lord Jesus Christ lives on the inside of us? Yeah. The Holy Spirit of God. I don't know if any, and I ain't on Facebook early at all anymore, but how many ever seen one of them memes when somebody's getting ready to say something and it says me above it, and over here it says the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's slapping their hand over your mouth because you're about to say something you shouldn't say. The Holy Spirit guides us and comforts us. He gives us a way to avoid those temptations. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. How many times has the Holy Spirit said, don't do that? It happens pretty regular sometimes. Because none of us can do it on our own. goes on. He says, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and he in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Can I get a witness in here today that the Holy Spirit has witnessed you. How many can say beyond the shadow of a doubt that I know my God is real, that He lives on the inside of me, yes. and that He sent His Holy Spirit to comfort me, yes. and to help me, and to bless me, and to take me through this life? Yes. Isn't it a wonderful thing? The Bible tells us over and over and over and over, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Trust in me. Psalms 118 and 8 is the very center verse in the Bible. And it says this, It is better to put your confidence in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Can I get an amen, brother? Amen. amen. I just want to welcome you gentlemen here. I appreciate it. I love you both. God bless you. The Holy Spirit of God. God sent, think about this, God sent a piece of Himself to live on the inside of us. Yes. What a blessing. What a love. What a love that is to know that you don't have to worry it says, be not afraid in the Bible 365 times. In fact, that's one time for each day. How many times do we get scared when we go through something that 
that's difficult. Yeah. It's like when I was in that wreck, I was scared to death. But God knew how to get my attention. And let me tell you something, He got it. It was tough. It was rough. It was hard. But He got me through it. But through those hard times, through those trials and tribulations, God changed my life for the better. Yes. How many can say they went into tribulation here and when they come out on the other side they were a better human being. They were more Christ-like. They were ready to stand up and boldly speak for Christ and give a testimony for what Christ had done to them that might bless some other life and cause someone to be saved. See, there's nothing better than a testimony. Jesus said he stood, that all the disciples and apostles were going to tell them, uh, people in the future, about Jesus because they walked with him. You're going to be my testimony. You're going to tell them what you've seen. You're going to write in words inspired by the Holy Spirit what you've seen with me, what you've experienced with me, what you've done with me, where we went, what we ate, the whole nine yards. And when we read the Bible, the Bible is one of those books that you don't read it, it reads you. Yes. It reads us. I know when I was younger, and I kept hearing this word. I know, I'm a pastor, yep. I sinned, yep. I was pretty rough, yep. But I kept hearing this word when I was pretty young called fornication. And I thought, well, I wonder what that word is. So I looked it up in the dictionary because I didn't know what it meant. But I realized real quick that I better quit doing that. Because I didn't like where that took me. See, that's the Holy Spirit of God leading you into all truth. Because I was doing something wrong and God wanted me to know, Ricky, you got to quit this. Yes. And then I met my beautiful wife. <laughs> Don't get carried away now. <laughs> because I got I wanted to get my life right with God. So instead of doing the things I shouldn't do, I started doing the things I should do. I started getting down on my knees and having a relationship with God and talking to God and telling God to help me through this and asking for His help. And He sent me a helpmate. See, it's the testimony that you and I give to another. Hang on, brother, because God's going to show up. You've got to be patient when you work with the Holy Spirit. But if you're patient and you hang on and you just wait and you stay in God's Word, God will bring you the answer and it will be the truth. The truth is something that the world today hates to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. They want their ears tickled. They want to say that it's okay. God wants you to have a million dollars. God wants you to drive a Mercedes Benz. God wants you to have a 15 uh, room castle. And that's simply not true. That is a lie straight out of hell. They need to read the book and the Word of God and find out how all the apostles and the disciples died. They died fighting for the cross, they're fighting for the cause of Christ. Peter was crucified upside down. Why didn't he have a million dollar home? Why didn't he have a whatever they wrote back in that day? A silver stallion. Whatever. See, we need to stay in the truth of God's Word. That's what directs us through this life. Can we get a witness in here that can say that God wants to bless us? He does. But we can't let the blessings overtake what God is doing in our lives. We all probably have a pretty decent house. We all probably drive a pretty decent car. All these people down here at the Nazareth, Nazarene Church, I call that the SUV Church. Because everybody down there drives an SUV and there's about 40 of them in the parking lot. Amen. God wants to bless us, but we don't have to worry about one specific thing. Prosperity, 
prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. We know that's not the real world. We know that's not the truth of God's Word. And that's all you hear so much in today's world. And the smoke screens and, and the concerts. I don't know about you, but from my experience, the Holy Spirit speaks softly. And I don't see how they can, they can hear the Holy Spirit amongst all that. I know. I've got enough older people in here to know that we need to get back to some good old-fashioned gospel. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. The gospel has been so distorted and watered down, it's just unbelievable. And that's what all the younger generation is called. Not all of them, but a lot. We need to get back to the truth. We need to let the one that lives on the inside of us bring us into the truth. Yes. And the only one that can do that is the Holy Spirit. The Comforter. How many times do you pick up your Bible Feel that comfort. Anybody besides me? God's word comforts us. Yes. Because God's word is truth. The Holy Spirit leads us into the truth. And we are comforted by that. I know so many times. I remember one time that. I had a situation going on in my life and I was all alone and I felt like God was so far away from me that I picked my Bible up one afternoon and I was laying on the couch and I had my Bible on the floor and I flopped it open. This is the power of God. This right here is exactly how it works because when I flipped that Bible open, exactly what was laying on my heart God put that word right in front of me and I knew the moment I read it that it was from God and that everything was going to be okay. Hallelujah, thank God. That's how God works. Yes, amen. That word right there will take you through this life. That's why they call it the book of life. Yes. There's nothing in life that you're going to face that that book does not have the answer for. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise God. I just want you to know today to stay strong. To stay in God's Word. To know what it says. I've read it from cover to cover. I know what's in it. But that don't make me an expert. There's times when I'm down and out that I need to pick up God's Word and let God show me the answer. And nine times out of ten, He always tells me it's going to be okay. You're going to make it through this. It's going to come to a good end. What the devil meant for evil, I'll turn it around and I'll use it for your good. The same way that the devil talked me in to getting drunk and chasing women. God took that, what the devil meant for evil, and he turned it around and he made it for good because I still worked in construction, which I love. He gave me a beautiful wife. He gave me two beautiful boys. And I couldn't be no more happier today than I was then. But I know that God was with me and I was on the right path and I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give in. That I was going to stay in the Word of God and that I was going to do God's will to the best of my ability. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Oh, God. Excited and that's okay with me. 
me. Because I know that God is in control. He is a sovereign God. He holds us in His hand. He holds the world in His hand. I don't care what the election does. I don't care what life does. I don't care what the devil does. I know that my God reigns. I know that my God is sovereign. And I know that my God is in control of it all. Amen. And they ain't nothing to touch you, brother, unless God says so. Or you, or you, or me, or you, or anybody in here. So if God's let something touch you, say, Lord, what do you want me to learn? Help me get through this and come out on the other side better than I was when I started it here. See, God's got a way of being able to do that. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thrown in the fiery furnace, they come out not even with the smell of smoke on them. That's because God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, was in the fire with them. And He's in the fire with you today, the same as He was for them. Just because you can't see Him does not mean He is not there. Because He is there. The Bible tells us so. Can, God, can, can you just give God a prayer for never leaving us? For never forsaking us? I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. I didn't ask for this job. Trust me. I did not ask for it. But the blessing of doing this is such an honor. He, and he thinks the same about you as he does me. I'm not one bit better than anybody in here. I face the same trials, the tribulations, the hardships that you do. But God put a call on my life that I couldn't turn away from. I tried. I tried. But God said, no. Well, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of this. There's brothers and sisters in here probably know twice as much about the Bible as I do. We don't always know what God's up to. But we know that He's up to something. And we know that He's up to good. Amen. He is a good God. Say amen. amen. Our interests are always on His heart. He will always do what's best, even if it's taking a person's life. Matt preached a message here that was pretty powerful a while back. But what if God don't? It don't matter. It's still going to come out good. Because one day, Jesus Christ is going to come back. And just between me and you, and I know there's some older folks in here that knows that when they was growing up, it was a lot different world than then than it is today. And as for you and me, I'd rather live in their day than live in today.
Acts chapter 4, where I'll start with verse 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they all had these things in common. And a great power gave the apostles witness to witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Great grace is upon them all. And God sheds His grace on thee. As we go through this remainder of the week, this coming week, be bold in speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Be bold in giving somebody a testimony. Don't be afraid to bring up the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid because God's with you. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. And the Lord Jesus Christ died that you could have that power. Is everybody in here good?